Kutti Sichis, Chelok Yud Gimel, Parshas Masai, Sicha number one. This Sicha is a very interesting Sicha, because in this week's Parsha, it discusses the division of the land according to the lots, meaning is that every single Yid, and every tribe, and within that tribe, every family uh, got a portion in Eretz Yisrael. And this week's Parsha discusses how that was divided up. It's really a continuation of Parshas Pinchas, where the division uh, was also discussed in Parshas Matai and Masai. It continues that discussion. So in the division of the land, we find really two aspects to it. There is the logical way how it was divided, meaning is that the larger tribes got larger portions because they had more people. And on the other hand, we also see this uh, super rational aspect to it, that the land was also divided by a girl, which is basically almost like um, luck, we should call it, Ashkacha Pratis, that in a sense that technically even a smaller tribe could have got a much larger portion. So it's a super rational approach to how the girl, uh, to how the land was divided. So Bapoyal, how did it work? We're going to go with Rashi's opinion right now. Is that first they looked at the entire Eretisral and all the land that was in it, and they divided it up into portions, twelve portions. The portions were um, div- uh, were divided based on first of all uh, the size of the land and also the quality, because if you have a very high quality piece of land, even if it's much smaller, it can have the same value as a much larger piece of land. So they divided up the uh, land into 12 portions based on the size and the quality, and they based that on how large the tribes were. Right. So if you have a very large tribe, then they have at least one portion that was very large. If you have a smaller tribe, they'd have a, another portion which was connected smaller. But they didn't just you know, then match it up. Rather, they had these 12 portions. Then what happened was the, the, the heads, the Nassim, came in front of Aaron, who was enclosed in his Urim Tumen. And Aaron, uh, as they came in front of him, the Urim Tumen, that wasn't Aaron, I'm sorry, it was a Lazar. They'd come in front of a Lazar Hakain, and the Urim Tumen would say, this Shevet gets this piece of land. This Shevet gets this other piece of land. And then they had a third thing which happened, is then the, the, the Nasi of that Shevet would pick up, um, do the Geirol, and, 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 the, and the piece of, uh, the, 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 the part, the portion that he picked up from this Geirol would be exactly the same one that a Lazar said. So it would make sense, A, logically, and then it would be the one that a Lazar kind said with Urm Matumim, and then the girl itself would also pick up that same one, and then the girl itself would say, this portion goes to this Shavit. So we're seeing over here this, this, this uh, double part. We're seeing that it was initially made in a logical way, divided up in a way that makes sense, but then we see this like Ruach HaKadosh, this super rational type of uh, aspect to it, that it was divided also based on this Ruach HaKadosh. Uh, and the Pashtas, the reason why he had this both was to show that everything was divine providence. Even though it was logical, at the same time, Ruch HaKadosh, the Umratumim, the girl, everything fit. But then there's also the, 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 the more Ruchnis the Kapar, and that's what we're going to discuss in the Sicha. So Sifal. Bechlukas Ars, Hamuver Eris, Bepashas Senu, Bepashas Pinchas, Kama Pratim Hagdorshin Bir, Umehem. It's a Dover Bey Fuchai. Chluka Piseichel Dafka, Kmoishin Namar, Lerav Tarben Achlasai, Lamat Tamit Ugemer. He says, He says, we find in the division of the land a something and its opposite. Because on one hand, we find that the land was divided up Like it says in the Pasik, the larger tribe got a larger piece of land and the smaller tribe got a smaller piece of land. And especially how the Chazal explain it and Rashi brings it, that it wasn't necessarily just divided according to area. But it was also divided according to quality. So it was really, really so what each tribe, each the 12 uh, portions that were divided, really made a lot of sense. Then we have the other psukim that say that you should divide the land based on a girl. Super rational. So the question is, why? Why did we have, we need a beer over here. It's not really a question. There was asking for explanation. Why do we see these two aspects by the girl? Second, the second question is, we already had a lozer who had the um v'tumim, and the um v'tumim said that if, if this, uh, if Sheva Plaini goes up to Eretz Yisrael and fights the battles, then they will uh, yarsh in this particular piece of land. So we already had the Urm Vatumim saying what they're supposed to be getting. So why did you also need the Gara? So 
So you look at R11. He says, Malash and Rashi, the Hagoyer Halpi Ruch Kaidish Mesh Mufush Babaras, or Mash Mulchayer Shumatum Hikhusha Hagoyer Hayopi Ruch Kaidish Black Back Right. He says, Look at Rashi, it seems like there's an explanation is that the Goyer. Um, that the purpose of having both was that the Urm Vatuman proved that the Gaira was Alpi Ruch HaKadosh, because you had the Gaira, and at the same time, the Urm Vatuman said exactly the same thing that the Gaira did. So that shows it was Ruch HaKadosh, and it wasn't by chance. It was really, uh, you know, giving that definitive ability for the Yidans to realize that this is Emes, and this is the Dvar Hashem. So obviously, there's not two different things, like there's a Gaira or Vatuman, there's really one thing. But the Rebbe doesn't like that answer. He says, first of all, what's the purpose of having the girl? If the Urm Matumim already is going to tell you what each tribe is supposed to get, why do you need the girl? That's A. But Rashi, Furthermore, Rashi himself brings that the girl would would call out, I am the girl. And and and, and the, as Rashi explains, the girl would speak with Ruch HaKadosh and it divided the land according to this girl. So you don't need the Urm Tumim. Rab Tshuva Saka'inim, She'en HaGeru Elam Pia Shemaim, the girl was was Pia Shemaim, as Ruch HaKadosh, Nemra Pia Geru, Techol HaKards. So the question is, L'chaira, one or the other. Once you had the Urm Tumim, which is Ruch HaKadosh, why would you need the girl? So it seems like there's a special in the girl itself. Gimel. The Indian Hagaral Darshu Chazal al al Pasik, Parsha saying it's a Sab the Nesra of Amarta Lam. Indian Gulas Arts. Lahazar Bezin al Kashla Yitziu Laz al Garalis. So we say by the Garal, Zal tell us that it says in the Pasik that you should command the Bene Yisrael and you should say to them regarding the boundaries of the land. The Chazal explained is that you have to warn the Bene Yisrael that you're not allowed to be Moitzi Laz, you're not allowed to make uh, complaints or, or, or rumors. That the the land was divided not al piruch kedush. It's a lav. It's a, an avera to say that the land was divided not based on what Hashem wanted. And petruvas of einim, haisifu bebir chaymer einim, haoyv al agayr kaoyv al aser sedibas. That someone who's over on the gayro is actually over on the ser sedibas. Not that the einim say. Meaning is that if you're over saying that it's not true, or I guess if you don't even listen, you have another piece of land. That's just like you're being over on the ser sedibas. He says it might be true that the words of the Ga'inim uh, don't need necessarily a source in the Gemara. Meaning, is like uh, usually the Rashaynim and Machrainim will only show, we, when they give a certain shot, they'll show where the source was in the Gemara. So the Ga'inim don't need that because we know that their words with Dibra Kabbalah, meaning is it was transmitted from generation to generation and not necessarily was written in the Gemara. But either way, the point is, but what's the connection? What's Pshat and what they're saying? Even though it says in the Pasuk that from the Yachik you shall make the girl, and from Hashem is its entire judgment, meaning is from Hashem is the Mishpat of the girl. So we see it does come from Hashem. But this that it comes from Hashem, that could just be being over in any of there that Hashem says, any of the 613. But the Goenim are comparing it dafka to the Indian of Seris Hadibris. Why? What's the connection specifically to Seris Hadibris? And that the Pasik doesn't um, show. And of course, even if you did have the Pasik, it doesn't explain what the connection is. Uh, it just tells you that there is a connection. Base. So to understand this, we're first going to give Hakdama that we find by Taira that there's three ideas regarding the Taira. Aleph. Tyrus called a Yerusha. Commission Namar Tyrat Sivalanu Maisha Marusha Kilas Yaki. So the Tyra is an inheritance to the Jewish people. Bays, you also call see it's called a Mecher, something that's sold. My result, Omar Kadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael Macharti Lechem Tyrasi. Hashem tells the Yidin, I sold you my Tyra. And bees, it's the Gimel, it's called a Matana. My result, Gimel Matana is Tyrus Nasan Kadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael Kulu Tyra Kulu. Kunusa Hatvila Zman Matan Tyra Sein. So there's three gifts that Hashem gave us. One of them is the Torah. And this is also the Nusach and Fila by the Gimel or Golan. We say that it's the Zman Matan Torah Seinu. So Matan Torah Seinu, it's the time of the giving of the Torah, Matan Malashan of Matan. 
So what's the difference why the Torah is called three things? So it's called three things, obviously, because in the Torah we have these three aspects. And the way how we receive those different aspects of the Torah, one aspect of the Torah we receive that is Yerusha, another aspect received as a Mecher, and the third aspect received as Matana. So we need to understand what these three different ideas are. We'll understand what they are by Pashtus, and then we could look, look back and understand what they are also up Yeruchni Yisein he says, Yerusha he davar she'ini tolui b'mayim ematzah makabel ha'yerush. God v'kamus se ve'eches se'katam v'kulu. He says, Yerusha is not tolui on the situation of the person who is the yerush, the one inheriting it. Whether he's a, a, a godl, whether quality or quantity, he's a godl, meaning he's over 13, or intellectually, he might be considered a godl, or a katan, or if it's a child. V'lash in a mishnah, t'nik b'in yom echa neichel u'manchil. Right, a child even one day old could inherit, and also if he passes away, he could give an inheritance if he owned anything to someone else. So Yerusha has nothing to do with age. You need to pay um, for whatever you're switching. It's like a barter. I'm giving you money, and then you give me something um, in, in its place. So he says, He needs to be of Yerusha and Mecha, he says, interesting is both of these ideas of Mecher and Yerusha, the one who's getting the item, the Makabal, has a connection, always has a connection to that item. How does he have it? It's because he's related, he's a Koruv to the Meirish, and the Yerusha is the property of the Meirish, of, of the one who's giving the inheritance. So you have a connection. You're his relative. So that means you also have a connection to his property. There, there is already some type of, 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 of connection between the two of them. By mecher, you're using your money uh, or your property to, 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 to buy it. So the point is that we see that there's a connection between the two of you, especially when we're going to discuss Baruch Nisinyanim. When we say there's a connection, that means there's a shaykhis. It's not one item is believable or infinitely a uh, greater than the other, or, or there is no connection between them. On the contrary, when we talk about, just like the Gashmis, we have a Mechira and Yerusha, that means there's a connection, just like there's a connection between the Yerush and the Meirish, and there's also a connection between the Mecher Lekech, because the Mecher, the one who's selling, and the one who's buying, each have what the other one wants. Right? The Lekech has money, the Mecher has an item, and each wants the other. That means there's always was a connection between them. There, there's a relative value. It could be that you have no connection at all to what's being given to you. Um, and it's just being given to you because of the, the goodwill of the one who's giving it. You might not be related to the person. You might not be giving him anything in uh, anything return. He's giving you a gift because of his uh, good heart. So that shows on a connection which is higher than, um, which we might not have been any error between the two of you. So similarly, in Torah, we have these three concepts. There's Bechin Aleph, Bechin Yasiyu, Rusha Shabbatayra. This is Kol Echa Ve'echa Yisrael, Yiyam Yishiyah, Hu V'chal Kehil Asyakiv. Lechein HaTayr Himerash Shalai. He says, every single Yid, whoever he is, he's part of Kehil Asyakiv. So, Oy Bezloi, the Torah is part of his Merasha. So, by being part of Klal Yisrael, you automatically have a certain kirva, you have a certain relationship to the Torah. So this is talking about a level of the Torah that by a yid you automatically have a certain relationship. You do a Yisrael, Rosh Tevis, Yeshish, and Reba, Isis, the Torah, the Kol Ech, and Yisrael, Yeshul, Is, the Torah. This is the idea that Yisrael is a Rosh Tevis, that there's Shish and Reba, there's 600,000 Isis of the Torah, meaning is that every single yid has one letter in the Torah. Right? So again, that means that you and the Torah have a connection. This makes sense according to the obligation that we have in the Torah, that every single Yid, whoever he is, has an obligation to learn. And you can't part yourself from this Chiv. And the Rebbe brings the Ramah and the Alter Rebbe that he says, whether you're rich or you're poor, whatever your situation is, you have an obligation to learn. So where, why does every person have an obligation to learn? It's because every single person has his letter, his connection to the Torah, and therefore everybody has um, 
a, a, an obligation to learn the Torah. So that's the idea of Yerusha, that there's a kirva, there's a connection in, between the two. Um, but the connection might not necessarily be because of your own qualities, it's just because you're related, but from the very fact that you're related shows that the two of you have some type of connection with each other. Um, and therefore also that's why the obligation of learning Torah is the same. Beis bechinas for every single yet. Beis bechinas at memecha shabatayra, hu chelik havana shabatayra. Shabala adma idea vidasa vi gyasa. Mechar Shabbatara means that you're giving something, you're, you're trading. What are you trading? You're gaining an understanding in the Torah based on the Yigia. You're giving your effort, you're, you're working to understand the Torah. So you understand the Torah based on the Havana that you have. So that's what it says. If you don't work and you said, oh, I found the Torah and I understand the Torah, we don't even trust the person. This is Dukmas Mecha Shalakin Lasham Tumur Schep, it's a nickname. This is what the Chazal saying Perk Yavis, that you have to prepare yourself to learn Torah because it's not a Yerusha to you. I, we know it is a Yerusha because we're talking about two different parts of the Torah, two different aspects. One aspect of the Torah, which is a Yerusha, is that you automatically, as a Yid, have a connection, therefore you have an obligation to learn it. Then there's another aspect of the Torah is how much you're going to understand. So how much, under, how much of the Torah are you going to understand? That's based on your own work. Meaning the Torah is, of course, connected to you because it's your Rusha. And you have an obligation to learn it. And you have your ois in the Torah. And that can never be taken away. But how much you understand, that's not a Yerusha. And that you need to work on. And that's why that's the union of Mecher Shev Torah. And this, there would be differences. It depends... Uh, as it says in the Chazal, that people's ain't the same Shabbos, people's minds are not the same. So therefore it depends how what your 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 um your your potential is and how much you work, and that's how much tire you will have. And also how much you're supposed to learn. Some people just have to learn one parak in the morning, one parak in the night. And then there's others who might even be chayv less, and others will be chayv to learn kola yoyim v'kola layla. Then gimel b'chinis matana shabatayr. He says, this is ma'ashan nitla la'adam matana mo'bayla in yonam b'tayr shahim. Loi ki beiz b'chinis anal ha'medudois mu'bolis l'fi erech ha'adam anivra sh'ay nimshech z'lov m'tzad m'tziyas sh'loi ki b'yirusha the level of matana shabbatayra is what's given to the person as a gift. Momaila, special in yonim l'tayra. Meaning is, it's not like the first two levels of the tayra, which are limited levels of the tayra. Yerusha is because you have a connection to that level. You naturally have this connection to the tayra. And then there's also the idea of mecher, which you have to work for. The per point of both of these levels are that it's limited because it's the Yerusha is what type of Metzius you are, whoever, what, you, what your Metzius is, you are your Yerush. So you get a level of the Torah what's connected to you. And since you're a Nivra, the level of the Torah which is naturally connected to you would also be limited. And of course, also your Havana. Your Havana is limited. So therefore, how much you're going to get out of it will also be limited. But then there's the idea of the Matan of Shabbatai. Matan of Shabbatai is that it's completely higher than your own capabilities. And this is Boi Medech Matan of Mailo, Metzada Kadosh Baruch and this is, comes completely from Mitzayin Hashem. It's a gift from Hashem, and Hashem can give you much more than you are um, maybe really deserving. This is al derech ma'amar chazal b'tchila hayim moishu leim etayra meshkach meshkach achin it leim etana hayin shekdeish etayti etzel etzel moishu but even nitzchi lemayin lebegad the nivra sheish by shichacha hayitzer shitinas leim eisak kadosh baruch hu matana. This is similar to what the chazal said in the Gita Moshe that he was learning the Torah and he would forget it until it was given to him as a gift. Meaning is. Moshe Rabbeinu is a nivra, and it's known with memory. As soon as you learn something, you're actually already starting to forget. Anything you learn, the moment you stop learning it, you're beginning to forget, and as more time passes, you forget more and more. It's the same thing happened to Moshe Rabbeinu. Until Hashem gave it to him as a gift, and since Hashem gave it to him as a gift, Hashem is infinite, therefore, he never had any uh, anything that any shichacha, right? Because it was a gift from Hashem. So al said, this is talking about memory. The Rebbe is more focusing on the first level is how much you're able to grasp of the Torah. So the level that you're able to grasp and have within you 
is also a gift from Hashem. So that's why it's only al there, because over there it's talking about memory, but it's, the, it's a similar idea. We are Nivroim, so we can only understand so much on our own. But then Hashem gives us, a, gives us as a gift something which we would not be able to understand on our own. And that's, that's a gift. This level is called the Gairo. Why? Because a just like a gift is not totally in the das of the one who's receiving it. A gift is completely the noisin. So similarly, the union of a gairo has nothing to do with the receiver, the one who's making the gairo. Uh, Hashem, Hashem is the one that's making the gairo. Therefore, a, a gairo is something which is, is a hint on something which is a mile matam vadas, because it's basically expressing what Hashem's will is. So it's not us trying to understand what Hashem's will is, or trying to understand the Torah. Rather, it's Hashem, how He has the Torah, and He's giving it to us. So it's a much greater level. It's how Hashem's Torah is being given to us on Hashem's level. The Adal. Amnon, Ima Yes, the Matana Ba, Ach, Rorak, Mirzaina Shanais, the Matana, Lay Mitsada Vidas, the Shamakabel, Apple Pekin, Omer Rizal, I loved the Ovelay Nichel and Ashe, Loy Havi Yahibley. Shigam Matonic Shur by Vidus Macabal, Shain Nis, the Matala Alamish Rayla. He says, Even though the, um, a Matana is, give, is given from the Rotson of the uh, no, of the giver, but nonetheless, we have a rule that a person doesn't give a gift unless the person who received it did something nice to him. You must have given him some type of nachas ruach. You did something for him that now he likes you, and therefore he wants to give it to you. Meaning is, it's not that you deserve it. You can do a person a favor. It doesn't mean that he has to start giving you. You do, let's say, you do a favor for a billionaire. So you do him a favor. It doesn't mean that he has to give you a billion dollars. All he needs to do is say thank you. But you incurred his favor, and he likes you, and he feels a connection to you. Therefore, if you're lucky, he might give you a billion dollars. Right? As I just said, it's still called the gift, even though you might have done something. I should really start a little bit earlier. He says, Meaning is that even a gift is connected to the avoid of makabel. Because you only give a gift to someone who's roy for the gift because you made a nakas ruach. But it's understood that even though it's still called a gift, what's a matas kinim? If you're roy for it, it's not a gift. It's schar. It's, 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 you did something, the guy has to pay you back. The vort is because you're, the avoid that you did was that you caused a nakas ruach to the person. Meaning is, you cause him, in a sense, an atiyas nefesh that he, in a sense, turns to. He feels some type of connection to you. Um, but it's not pshat. But you cannot force the person to give you the avoida, what, uh, the matana. Your avoida is not machrich that he has to give you a gift. Meaning is, in other words, that the matana is not bechlal the erch of what you've done. And therefore, as a proof for this, two people can do the same favor to someone. Um, one person will get the netiyah sanefesh of the of the nisan, and he will maybe get some a gift a gift back. While another person could do the same gift, but the nisan didn't feel a connection to you. Therefore, you don't get anything back. For example, let's say two people go to a billionaire businessman and want to be his apprentice. One of them he might just say no to. The other one he says yes to. Why? Why is one more deserving to the other? They're both basically not apprentices. They don't have any information. They don't have any experience. They don't have any skills yet. The reasoning is because one of them he had a Natiyas Nefesh. He felt the connection to. So that feeling of connection, therefore, the billionaire will now become his um, mentor. Is he deserving of it? Did he work on it? No, it's a gift. But there was some type of nachas ruach that made the connection between the two of you. So, the representative says something very interesting now. He says, The idea is that the idea is that the idea is so we have the vort of when you gaiti, if I worked, I worked and I found you believe him. So it's explained in other places, Mitsasi means 
a mitzia always comes by hasachadas. When you find something, it means that you didn't expect uh, to find it, even if you're looking for something. But when you find it, it's always by hasachadas. Because if you knew what it was, if you knew where that object was, then you're, it was never lost and you're not trying to find it. LMI, you don't know where it is and you're searching all over the place. You might have some ideas where to look, but at the end of the day, you don't know where it is. So when it comes to, it was with Hesach Das, you didn't have intentional uh, uh, intentional uh, mind frame to know exactly where it is. It came as a little bit of a surprise. Oh, that's where it was. So the idea also means is that when a person works hard to understand something, the mitzia, this that he finally understands it, it's always going to be deeper uh, and more than you actually worked on right? it's more than your you get therefore it's like the hasa das idea is that it's higher than your own das you're getting more than you worked for he says but that's not the same thing that we're talking about over here he says what we're talking about over here is that you worked so when you're working, there's a hatacha, there's a promise. When you work, you will find. Meaning is when you work hard, you will get more than you worked for. But the vort is that your gi is being mamshech, is drawing down this higher level of understanding. But at the end of the day, it's still obviously somewhat connected because your, your gi is being mamshech, something higher than what you may, maybe uh, have uh, worked on. But that's kind of the rules that Hashem put into the, this world. You work hard, you will get more than uh, the, the work might have been able to get on its own. But it's understood that this is all still connected, and it's be'erich the avoda and the medrega of the nevraim. But we're talking about a gift. It's the level of the Torah that comes with sand the bayra. It's completely higher than the avoda of the nevraim. He says the achana, the achana, the preparation that the makabel does is that you're just trying to get the, it, it, trying to get the, you do a nachas ruach, meaning is you're just trying to get the noisin to um, take interest in you, and once you get him to take interest in you, you're hoping that he will um, give you what, uh, give you a gift, something that you're not deserving of, but it's not being achriach this gift. So in other words, when it says you're gaiti mitzasi, means that you're working, and you get something much greater than you worked on. But it's be'erech what you've done. Masha, right? So let's say I'm working on to understand the shtukl gemara. So I'll, if I work hard, I will understand that piece of gemara much more than I maybe would have deserved. When we're saying that it's a gift is, it means is I, I made an achas ruach to Hashem, and therefore Hashem might give me, uh, help me understand shas in general. Even though I didn't, what what connection do I have to the entire shas? I learned one amud. But since you worked hard on that, uh, since you've worked hard on that amud, you did whatever you did, and you made an achas ruach to Hashem, therefore Hashem gives you a gift that He'll give you the ability to learn, let's say, the entire shas on a much deeper level. So dugmas inyan zem etzinu gam he says we find this idea by a girl. The Chavis Yoy says that it's carve a double that if you do a girl properly, I guess fair girl, then Hashkachal Yain will attach itself to it. And then this, it's mesugal that this hashkacha will make sure that the uh, the shkacha will connect to this gerah to make sure it's done properly as long as you've done the gerah properly. Meaning that even though the gerah is hashkacha yena, but it's and it's not totally at all in your own avoid your own bechira, but nonetheless you have to do a kaigen. You need to do it properly. You do what you need to do properly, then you will get this hashkacha yena. So the idea being is that it's a gift. So you do what you're supposed to do, everything you're supposed to do. Then you'll get a gift which is much higher than necessarily you deserve. So Alderasa, who bechinas matana begeril shvatayra, bechinas zu of nesinas nesina nesanas la adam rak aben neichel lenafshei la kolish korchay de shleimas avidaisik viyachalta shal nevra. This gift is given and matana of girls given to the person when he does a nachas ruach to Hashem. So what does it mean a nachas ruach to Hashem? That means you've done as much as you can. 
Then you're given as a gift that which is much greater than your than your own avayda. Similar to what we said by Moshe, he was learning it, kept on learning as much as he can, but he's human, so automatically there's always going to be memory loss. Then it was given to him as a gift that he'll uh, remember it forever. So similarly, we're saying by the Matana is that you understand it as much as you can, and you got the Yagayti, you got the Matsasi as much as you can, but after you've got as much as you could get on your own Avaidah, then Hashem will give you a matana, that which is much, much higher than you could have received um, on your own. So probably the example of Shas is not good, because you've only learned one daf, you didn't do all you can to learn the entire Shas, but maybe in that one daf itself, to understand, like the Ragachavar would understand that daf, that would be like a matana momayla. So, hey, hey, now we can understand what the Chazal meant. So, uh, that we ask Hashem, it's a prayer, that it, uh, Hashem should build the base of Migdash, and we should get a portion in his Torah. So question number one. He says it doesn't understand. If you work hard to understand the Torah, then we have Havtacha, that if you work hard, you will find. You will be successful. And if you don't work hard, davening to Hashem is not going to help you. You need to work hard. So davening, but not working hard, then you can't trust you to say, oh, I daven and therefore I was successful. No, al tamen. There always needs to be the idea of Yagiyah. So what's the purpose of davening to Hashem to give us a chalik in the Torah? Base. Second question is, what's the connection? One is about building the base of English, and one is about giving a portion in the Torah. Why are you putting both of these things together? And Gimel, and Third question is, the deek of the words. Why does the Kivas give us our portion? How is it your portion? You didn't even learn it yet. Give us a portion in the Torah. What is it? Our portion. It's already yours, even though you didn't learn it yet. You have no shaykh to it. The mashmois is that you do have a shaykh for it, even before it was given to you. How, how do you have a shaykh to this level of Torah before it was given to you? And it says, Sarascha, which means Torah Hashem. Why are we asking for Hashem's Torah? What's the deek over there? Just say, give us a chalak in the Torah. Why are we asking specifically, you want a chalak in your Torah? But according to what we explained earlier, now we can understand this. Habir Bizet. He says, Iker Teichen Tfila Zu Abhinas Matana Shabal Taira. Habo Mamaila, we he should lay be erha vidas vigis Adam. Chen Sarah has that Tfila Bakasha. He says, The Iker Teichen of this Tfila is that we're asking for the Matana of the Taira. And that comes Dafka Milmaila, and it's Shloy be erha your vida, and therefore you need a Davin to it. Davin for Hashem to give you this portion of the Taira. So that's what we're davening for. We're davening specifically for the level of Matana. That's the level of Torah that doesn't come through Yagiyah. So in Achinam, it's at the Indian of Yagiyah, but Torah, we're not going to daven to Hashem. We'll work as hard as we can. But get this third level, we need to daven for. And that answers the first question. Then he's mispal v'sein chalkenu v'sar sacha. Chelik zeh b'tayra sh'yesh lay k'far, which is chalkenu yutan lay. Yilam denu k'may sh'hi b'tayra sacha. V'oifin halimad d'b'chinas matana sh'ta b'tayra v'sein malashan matana. Ha'tayra k'fi sh'ilamayim again in Avraim t'ara sacha. Daika t'arascha shalok kadosh baruch hu. So this answers question three. We ask, why does it say Chalkeinu and Tayr Sacha? So the explanation is because we know in order to get a gift, we're asking, we're diving to Hashem to give us a gift. But in order to get that gift, we need to do a Nachas Ruach to Hashem, which means a Nachas Ruach that we give to Hashem is that we work as much as we can to understand the Torah. So that, those ideas that you understood in the Torah, that's called your Chalik. So saying Chalkeinu, the Chalik, why is it yours already? It's because you already learned the Torah and you understood it to the greatest of your ability. Then we're saying, Hashem, saying, Chalkeinu, give us, give us a gift, give us a gift in our portion that it should be like Torah Secha, meaning is that it should be, you should teach us the Torah Secha, that our, our Chalik should be 
um, the Ufen Halima, the way that we understand the Torah, should not just be according to the the, the Yigiyah that I had. Rather, it should be according to Torah Sacha, the Ufen Torah uh, of the Torah, how it is by Hashem, which I, as we've said is the level of a gift, something which is much higher than we can understand on our own, because it's the Torah Sashal Kadosh Baruch and the Hashem, of course, is infinite. And this is Dugmas Marmar Azab and Egeel Limud HaTorah B'Gan Eden. Shotzarach Lias V'Talmud Doi Shalom B'Rei L'Mazah B'Ufen HaLimud Shabay L'Mazah B'Yad Doi B'Loi Doi Masih B'Gan Eden Adar Chatzai. So this is similar um, to what the Chazal say regarding learning Torah in Gan Eden. It says that a person who learns Torah, L'Shma, it's the, the, the Torah is B'Yad Doi. The Torah comes to him in Gan Eden. So we explained what it means is that the, the Talmud that you learned in this world, you're going to understand it in Gan Eden in a much higher level. You're going to understand the Lader Chasayt. So it's called Talmud of Yod, I mean, it's your ta Talmud, the Torah that you learned, but you'll understand it in a much greater level. So that over here we're saying even a much, in a, in a deeper level, because ultimately even Gan Eden is limited. So we're understanding a much deeper level, but still it's a limited level because it's the level of Gan Eden. But we're asking for the Torah of Hashem, which is completely infinite. But the point is that Hashem would only give us this gift of the Torah Secha, the Torah of Hashem, only if there was an Achas Ruach. So, similar to Moshe, that the Torah that he learned already, he was given that Torah as the Torah of Hashem, because there's no Shechacha in front of Hashem. Uh, so why did it, how is that, meaning is how is the Indian of Shich, not having Shichicha, the Indian of Torah Sacha, because Hashem's Torah, there's no Shichicha, Lefnekisifedacha. So Moshe Rabbeinu was Zoycha, who was given as a gift, Hashem's Torah, that also he wouldn't have any Shichicha. So now we can understand why it says at the beginning, because the Amitis Inyan of Matana is only going to be when Mashiach comes, when we learn the Tayrasa Shem Mashiach. So basically, the Rebbe is actually introducing a deeper level now in the idea of a gift. Because there's a level of a gift that we can get nowadays, and then there's a level of a gift, which is the Amitis Inyan of a gift, that we can only get when Mashiach comes. So the level of the gift that we can get nowadays is, all, is, is, is I guess, Bligvul, but it's going to be a lesser level of Bligvul than when Mashiach comes. So therefore, we're asking Hashem that you should build the base of Migdash, and when we build the base of Migdash, we can get the Amitis, the deepest level of a gift that comes from the Torah of Hashem that we cannot get even uh, nowadays. Because we know that even in infinite, there's many different levels of uh, bleak vol, which we're not going to get into, but just a simple mathematical one. You could say you have a dot, and a dot, you can, sp you can always make the dot smaller, right? Even in this world, you can co constantly be making the dot smaller, 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 so it's infinite. The, 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 the amount of the, the nukuda is you know, infinite because you can always make the nukuda smaller. The potential, I should say, is infinite. But you can also have a line, which you can make the line smaller, infinitely. You can constantly, theoretically, the line can always... B becomes smaller and smaller than what it is. But then you can also have a cube. We chose to make the cube smaller and smaller and smaller than what it is. So even in an infinite, you can have a dot, which is infinite, a line, which is infinite, and a cube, which is infinite. The idea being is that you have different levels of quantity and quality also in the realm of bleak vol. So there's the tyrant, there's a bleak vol that we can get nowadays, and then there's a mitus union of bleak vol that we can only get um, when Mashiach comes. Uh, he says the difference between the Yerusha uh, in Tyra and the Ingen of Mechira in Tyra, which both of these levels are levels which are Shaykh to the level of Nebraim. And then we have the idea of Matanash Batayra, that's the level of Tyra, how it is in Tzad is actually also recognizable in how the Tyra was given to the Yidim. So Amr is out. Torah tziva lanu Moshe, Torah gumanashe tar tarfei shud alav havi. And no yichiv lo yil lachal mepiak gur shemanu. Hainu shakol mitzvah sa Torah nimsur liyisrael idei Moshe lavan beis diber sarishaynes. And no yichiv yil lachal shem mepiak gur shemanu. So we have the Chazal. It says that Torah tziva lanu Moshe, Torah Torah gumanashe that the Torah which is gumanashe six hundred eleven was given through Moshe. So six hundred eleven mitzvahs given by Moshe, and no yichiv yil lachal was given from Hashem. Why? He says, Because 
The reason why the 611 mitzvahs are given through Maisha, because the 611 mitzvahs need to be given in a way, Havana, we need to understand it. So it's given to Maisha, and Maisha was able to give us that, those 611 mitzvahs in a way of Havana, of, of he says, but the first two dibras of their union is these ideas are lamayla mesecha, and therefore they need to be given to a person as a gift. And that's why it was also it was given to the Yidin not through a mamutza, not even Moshe Rabbeinu. Rather, it had to be given directly from Hashem. Because if it would have give, been given through Moshe Rabbeinu, that means it would have been given in a way, Havana v'hasaga. We wouldn't have had the essential quality. The essential quality of, of, of a Muna, Kabbalah Sa'al, is, um, is that it's higher than Tamadas. You're getting the essential quality that you and Hashem have a connection. That Hashem appears, that, that Hashem is real to you. Hashem is vlikvul. Hashem is infinite. You can never understand Hashem. So the only way for us to have this connection of the, really the, the, the unity that Hashem is one, uh, and there's nothing else besides of Hashem, we cannot completely understand it. The only way we can receive it is by Hashem giving to us that perception. Um, therefore, it came directly, the other 611 mitzvahs, it could be, uh, it's given to us in a way that we could actually understand them. So mitzvah has galuzu, it's not this idea of Vidabra Lakim. It's not this idea of the Nasina of the Torah that we're giving, as we're saying, this Inyam, which is given as a gift, which is the Maila of Tamadas. That's why the time of the Torah is called Matan Torah, because it was given to us uh, as, a, as a gift. He says, all the hachanas and preparations that we did for Matan Torah, even the union of saying Nasa Nishma, which is the union of Bitl Matzis La Kadosh Baruch that we will do even before we understand. That is a Voida and the Bitl of a, of, of a Nivra. And it's never going to be Be'erch, this Skalas that has happened by Matan Torah, where Hashem came down on Harsinai. Hashem spoke. So that is the gift that Hashem uh, connects himself to us. This is um, another place the Rebbe explains it, why by um, Avraham Avinu, why the connection that it first discusses in the Torah between Hashem and Avraham Avinu is where it says in Parshas Lech it says Hashem pure to Avram. So the Shaila was, why didn't, why didn't the Torah also discuss the Mesir Snepish that Moshe Rabbeinu had by Urkastim, that he was willing to, he was thrown into a fire because of his belief to Hashem. Shouldn't that be our introduction to Avraham Avinu, the Mesir Snepish that he had? Why is it just that Hashem tells him to leave his land that he listens? So the Rebbe explains it's because the Messiris Nefesh that he had by a Krasdim is ultimately his avoida, his work that he did. But when Hashem appeared to him, that's an Indian which is, uh, comes with Sad the Bayer, which is an Indian which is infinite, which is much greater than Avram Avinu could ever reach on his own. And that's the same idea of a Neich Yilacha, the Indian of Matan Torah, that we were given something which we never would have been able to perceive and have on our own. Aye, what about the other eight that's also called Matan Torah? Only the first two Dibras should be called Matan Torah. Why are the other eight called Matan Torah? The reason is because they also are connected to this union of Matana as we'll see in Siv Zayim. So, Zayim, you do a sheet of Ramban Va'oid. So the Ramban and others explain that it says like uh, all the Sersa Dibras were set to Yidin. So they explain what's the difference between the first two and the other eight, then, if they are, heard all of them, is because the first two they heard and they were able to grasp them. It was revealed to them. They had a gili of the first two. They didn't need to be explained afterwards by Moshe and what they were. But the other eight, they heard Taka from Hashem, but they weren't able to understand it. They were, it, wasn't, it wasn't revealed in a way that they could grasp it and come on with them. Therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu had to explain it afterwards. Question one is, what's the purpose of hearing the Koilis if you don't understand it anyway and need to be explained by, to, by Moshe Rabbeinu afterwards? What's the purpose of Hashem saying it? 
And Beis Banu Tamechilut Ben Beis Dibur Sarishoynes Shashamu Bnei Yisrael Pei Kadosh Baruch Hu Avinu Aisam Lachas Dibur Sarichoynes Shashamu Rakakol. Also, what's the difference? Why was the first two Dibrus said um, from Hashem and, and you didn't understood it? Mash Enkin, the other eight, they only heard the call but didn't understand that and Moshe Rabbeinu need to explain it afterwards. The Habir Bazar. He says the first two dibris was nimshach to the yid in the union of Amuna Kabal Salmach Hashemayim that was given as a gift. Therefore, they heard it from Hashem directly, and this was on the meaning is the level as Hashem perceives a noichiv yilacha, like Hashem's perception. Of a that's the perception that we were given. Even though we were in a ruin, we're getting the same perception that Hashem has of these two things, and therefore it did not go through Moshe Rabbeinu. He says, but just having this union of Kbal Sal and this Amuna and Oifin Klali is not enough. You need to ha- you need to be able to feel those that 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 Amuna and that all even when you're doing the other when, even when you're actually fulfilling any of the mitzvahs. That when you feel when you're fulfilling Akima mitzvah pratis, you should feel that this comes because that you're that you're doing the mitzvah because of your Amuna Kabal Sal. Which is very powerful. Meaning is it's not just that you uh, you know, you know that there's a Shem, and let's say you have, you know that Shem is real, and you have that same perception as a Shem as a Shem has, because a Shem gave it to us in Eich Vilacha. And then, since you have this great perception of a Shem, then you know that whatever he tells you is probably makes a lot of sense. A Shem is so amazing, then for sure the other 611 mitzvahs that he's giving to you, I should also fulfill. Because since a Shem is so great, then whatever he's giving me is probably also very great, and therefore I should fill it because of that. Meaning, is you're ultimately fulfilling it because of logic. Hashem is amazing. I'm going to do whatever he wants. Rather, it needs to be deeper than that. That the other 611 mitzvahs themselves, you're doing it with this hergosha. That this itself is something which is the Ma'ilam Atam Adas. This mitzvah that I'm doing, that I'm not going to steal or I'm going to put on tefillin, is not just because Hashem, who's so great, told me to do it. And therefore, for sure, there's a good reason for it. On the, no, more than that, deeper than that. That these mitzvahs themselves is really a gilui of something which is a ma'ilam atam adas. It's a gili of the boyre oilam, something which is on the same level as a neichim yilacha, something which is on a level of a gift, something completely higher than the world. So, so in order to connect the union of Amun and Kabbalah Sol with each mitzvah, he says, therefore, if we just heard the first two, it wouldn't, you might, would have had the proper belief, you would have been able to have a Muna Hashem, but it wouldn't have connected to the mitzvahs. So what needs to happen is, there needs to be the call of Hashem in all of the other 611 mitzvahs. When they heard the call of Hashem regarding all the other mitzvahs, then it, within the other mitzvahs is um, revealed also this in of Bleak Bull. And as we know, the Ser Sedibris of uh, Sad Yugoin brings in each of the letters of the 613 mitzvahs is, uh, sorry, in the letters of the Ser Sedibris is a hint for every mitzvah in the Torah. And if you want to know more about it, the Rebbe gives, uh, in the note 66, it gives you the, um, the different opinions of where each mitzvah is hinted to in the Ha'ar Sintar Shlema. You can look over there and it tells you which word and is hinting to which mitzvah. But the point is, all the 613 mitzvahs are inside the luchas. So having the luchas being said, the Ten Commandments being said, in Baruch, that means within all the 613 mitzvahs, there's also the essence of all of them will be heard, the kol Hashem, that all of them are really b'derech uh, matana, something which is a high matan b'das. He says, since, he says, since the, the reason why they needed to hear the Dibris from Hashem is not because uh, they wouldn't be able to understand unless Hashem told them these mitzvahs. 
No, they could have understood it on its own. They, they can have Moshe Rabbeinu explain to them. The purpose, the reason why they needed Hashem to say this to Sarah Sidibros is that they should have this inyan of Kabbalah's old, Amun, which is the Maile Matam Adas. Therefore, they did not um, hear the other mitzvahs in a way of Havana Vasaga from Hashem. The Adrab, Allah Yibichotum Lashmai Lahavin Hadibris Kabish Yatsim Pia Kadosh Baruchu. Raksha Shamu called Hakadosh Baruchu, shall call the Hashem Himshuk, Beshemek called Bim Israel, Munu Basham, Bos Amochus Isbar, Gamma Chasadibris became Kol Achab Achab and Mitzvahs. He says, he said, not only did they not understand it from Hashem, but on the contrary, they couldn't understand it from Hashem. Because the whole idea of this call is that it's higher than Tam Vadas. The whole purpose is not that Hashem is going to mitzamsen and limit the, the coil until a way that we could understand it. Because if he's limiting it until we could understand exactly what each one of the mitzvahs is, that defeats the whole purpose of having the matana, the inyan, which is in Gantz and Hachav Atam Adas. Therefore, the way Hashem gave it to us, He gave it to us as a b'derech matana, in a way that's in Gantz and Hachav Atam Adas. And then Moshe Rabbeinu also gave, it, then Moshe Rabbeinu came and also explained to us the mitzvahs in a way that we could understand it. So, in other words, Moshe Rabbeinu gave us the inyan of Mechira, the inyan of Yerusha in the Torah, right? Torah Tzibalani Moshe Rasha Kilas Yaakov. It's Torah Tzibalani Moshe is the Moshe Kilas Yaakov. So there's the aspect of what Moshe Rabbeinu did that he took the Torah. And he was able to draw it down, just like water flows from a high place and, and goes to, uh, to the lower place. The idea is that the water stays the same, it's just in a higher place or lower, but it's being drawn down in a way that we understood. So Hashem gives us the curl. So ultimately, it's the same essence. And then Moshe Rabbeinu will take that curl, which is the essence of what the mitzvahs are, and then he could draw it down in a way that we have a van of the hasag. Now can you understand what we asked initially? What are the Goinim talking about when they said that you're for over on the girl, you're over on the Sir Sadibris? Right? What's the, first of all he said, what's the connection? He says, Avera al in the girl dukma savera lay rock al chalik havana sagish batira, ala bikinas girl shabatira tena sir sadibus shinit least trouble that matan of a girl mile knabaruka. He says the vart is because when you're over the whole idea of a girl is it's the mile of a so the the Eretz Yisrael being divided, Al Pigura is showing that the Torah was given to us, that the Eretz Yisrael was given to us in a way which is Lamaila Matam Adas. It was given to us the essence of what Eretz Yisrael is. It was given to us the Matana, uh, which is inside Eretz Yisrael. So if you argue, either you don't listen or you're being moitzi laz on the Gero, you're basically um, you're disparaging the idea of the Matana, the chilek of the Matana, which is w- within Eretz Yisrael. And that's the same idea of the matana, which is a Sarah Sadibur. So if you're going against the matana Shabbat it's this as if you're going against the matana Shabbat Sarah Sadibur. Um, because you're basically missing the essence of what Eretz Yisrael is, the gift that Hashem gave us. Because what you're saying is that Eretz Yisrael is only connected to us, Apitam Vadas, either the way of Yerusha or a way of, uh, of, of working for it. So if you hold that the connection that a Yid has with Eretz Yisrael is only Apitam Vadas, you're missing the essence of what Eretz Yisrael is. But when you realize that the essence of Eretz Yisrael is that Hashem gave it to us in the, as a gift, and then you have the Mechira, and then you have the Inyan of Yerusha, where that connects it also to Hapi Damanas, then you are then you are getting Torah in its complete way, and that's why we're going to say in the next sif that the the, the, the need to be the Eretz Yisrael need to be given in both ways. There need to be the aspect of the Geirah, but there also need to be the idea that it was also was logical. So Piel now you and Mashuk Lukas Eretz Yisrael he said Peter Geirah Dafka. He says the idea of Eretz Yisrael is that Hashem's eyes are there constantly, beginning of the year until the end. That in Eretz Yisrael it's mir, it shines the gilu lekus begilui without any halamis vester hesterim shomayim lemezat. Right. So it's Eretz Yisrael basically is is Hashem's revelation as is, not how it's subdued and hidden. It's rather, it's like the Kol Hashem by Ma'at and Taira, which was revealed that this is the Kol Hashem. Similarly, Eretz Yisrael, it's a gift from Hashem. Hashem's Gilo uh, Yalikus is shining there without anything blocking it. So this idea that Ulam has that, which is Gashmias and it's Chumrias, Will be a place that the elikus could shine begiloy. That's higher than our avoda. We can never reach that level to be able to connect to the essence of Hashem through the avoda of a nivra on its own. 
It has to be given as a gift. We do everything we can, and Hashem, because of the nachas ruch that we've given Him, He will give us uh, this gift, or He gave us this gift. Which, which, Stam, this is this is the, as we mentioned earlier, that just like in Tyra, there's two levels of matana in Tyra. There's matana we can get by ilm haza, and then there's the matana, the ultimate level of matana, which well, we're going to get by Yemoisa Mashiach. So similarly, we have that now. There's the oifen of the matana that Shem gave us now, but then the ultimate revelation of that gift, the mitis a matana, the ultimate revelation of that gift that Hashem gave us the very Yisrael will be revealed um, when Mashiach comes. Meaning, as Hashem gave the gift, just like He gave Matan Tyra, gave us an entire Tyra, but for, but then there's the revelation of that Tyra, that revealing this idea of the matana which we have some of it is revealed now, and the ultimate revelation of the gift that Hashem already gave us by Matan Torah will be when Mashiach comes. So similarly, Hashem gave us, the, gave us Eretz Yisrael, He gave us the Matan of Eretz Yisrael, and the ultimate revelation of the Egil Lekus with Eldin HaLamas V'Esterim at all, will, the ultimate revelation will be when Mashiach comes. Therefore, the, the, the division needs to be through a gairo, had to be a division, shaloy api das, tamadas of the person, hashem yipo gairo, api kishkach al yaynan. Ukshem shenaz bar al yil, ukhinaz matana ma gairo ba la akhre shleim asabay disabay, ha nivra, chemi nidi didan, rak la akhre, ha tzibit, la rab tarbit, la maat tamid, la hachin ha kol api tamadas, azoi hoysa ha talas al gairo, shaydeza nazgal la chluka seret israf moishi api ashkach al yayna megilu meisa kadr baruch. So just like we explained earlier regarding the Torah, that you need to do as much of, as much as you can do on your own, and that causes a nachas ruach, and then Shem gives you the level matanah shabbat Torah. Similarly, by the girl, you need to have l'rav tarve l'mat tamit. They need to divide up Eretz Yisrael in a logical way, and once you've prepared everything, I'll be logic. You've made the girl, the division of the land, that every single yid has a portion in Eretz Yisrael, and every yid was given a portion in a way, or was prepared to be given a portion in a way that makes sense. We've done it all, saying, Hashem, this, this portion makes the most sense that it should be given to this shevet, and within, uh, you know, and then this portion makes the most sense that it should be given to this shevet. So, das, it makes sense. Then Hashem give us, gives us a gift of Eretz Yisrael, that the essence of what Eretz Yisrael is, is revealed within those portions. So, if the portion that you're given won't just be that it makes sense, but it also is revealing the Ratzin of Hashem, it reveals the Hashkach al-Yayna that it should be begiloi me'esha Kaddish Baruch Hu.